do raw vegans need to brush their teeth? I'll be answering that question in this video, and I've written about that in my latest book, Raw Vegan Mist Debunked. My name's Ronnie Smith from UK Fruit Fest. Uh, the Raw Vegan Mist Debunked book is part of the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle that's available this week, and you should go and check that out by the link below. It's not, it's not, um, not many days left. We might be in the last few days, so uh, go and check that out. I'll have a link below for you to find out more about that. Do raw vegans need to brush your teeth? It's kind of an interesting question. Certainly when I started off eating the raw vegan diet, the message that I heard from many people was that, um, you know, there were some problems with brushing your teeth. If you're talking about having a more natural lifestyle and we should maybe brush our teeth once in a while with like a soft brush, maybe with just water. And a lot of people suggested that they had better teeth than ever on a raw vegan diet and so on and so forth. So I, for a period of time, did brush my teeth. What wasn't particularly worried about it, and uh, was following a raw, mostly raw diet. And that didn't work for me personally. I found problem like the buildup of plaque around the teeth was starting to happen pretty quickly. So. I love the idea that you could give up brushing your teeth uh, on a raw vegan diet. I still think there might be a way of doing it. But um, personally, I fairly quickly started to realize in the first few years of my raw vegan diet that I was starting to have some damage in my teeth. And I was in denial about it a little bit because I liked the idea that this natural lifestyle could stop you from having to do things like that, like brushing your teeth. I didn't go back to brushing my teeth. I think I was using like natural non-fluoride toothpaste or whatever. And I was going to the dentist, but I think I, I remember times when I like walked out of the dentist because I didn't like what they said and, and various things like that. Um, or one time I walked in and I thought they were going to do one thing. Then they said they were going to do something else, which might have been more important to do. But I was annoyed that they'd said one thing and then wanted to do another. So I just walked out and just said, I don't want to do this and went. And, um, but I was having more problems with my teeth. And I went to different presentations from raw food teachers. To some degree, they had answers. But something I would see on the forums, which never seemed to ring true for me, was people would say, well, it's mineral deficiencies. If you're having, having a problem, you've got a mineral deficiency, you need to eat more greens. And I was never a high greens eater, really. I eat more greens probably now than I used to, but I just didn't really like eating greens. Because I would generally eat foods, whole foods one at a time. I didn't really like eating greens, so I didn't eat that much of them. And so that kind of would have made sense, maybe, but I just thought to myself, well, if I've got mineral deficiencies, why would it only show up in my teeth? Like, why wouldn't I have all sorts of other health issues? So that never really made sense. So people were talking about flossing. I thought, okay, start to floss more and speak to the dentist. Eventually, I went back to a fluoride toothpaste because they were saying, you know, you need to consider this. I've got a lot of fillings. Um, over the years, I've had root canals, crowns, done damage to my teeth. And I was always trying to work this out. Why was this the one health thing? And research do more. And tooth decay is a very common disease. We're talking about billions and billions of people. Three billion plus people that suffer from tooth decay of some kind. Apparently, there's estimates of virtually all adults in the earth, all adult humans have some degree of tooth decay. And what tooth decay is, is a bacterial condition. So many years ago, and there's evidence showing that there are primates that had tooth decay maybe tens of millions of years ago. There's a lot of history of this stuff. So tooth decay um, is a bacterial issue. It involves bacteria that are in our mouth, an infection of bacteria that, that happen to be common across humans. 
who knows when they infected us. And what happens is that when we have leftover food in our mouth, but particularly carbohydrates and sugar, that these bacteria feed on that, which is okay. The problem comes when that sugar and carbohydrate is like sticking to the teeth. Usually what would happen is there might be an excess and some bacteria would be in that excess and the bacteria would bloom. And the problem is that the bacteria then create a waste product, which is acidic. And that, that acid turns the environment of the mouth, the pH towards more acidic. And that can be bad for the teeth. But what generally happens is our saliva then rinses that out, remineralizes the teeth through the action of the saliva. So everything's fine. The problem comes with sticky foods. So when foods stick to the teeth and are sweet, uh, that bacteria starts to bloom and it creates a coating called plaque, essentially. And that plaque is acidic and that acid starts to gradually wear away at the teeth. And the dentine in the teeth, and there's the enamel in the teeth, sorry, is the hardest thing in the human body. Some uh, men might, might want to disagree with that, but no, it's the hardest thing in the human body and uh, harder than any of the other bones. But with repeated exposure to the acids that the bacteria produce for long periods of time um, stuck on the surface, those dent the, that enamel can wear down, cause holes, and the bacteria can go into those holes and continue to cause acid and wear away at the teeth. And eventually it goes into, wears away the inside of the tooth, causes tooth decay and uh, eventually toothache. So that's really the process. And uh, the reason we brush our teeth, because of that sticky layer, we brush the bacteria away. We brush the acid away. And that allows for then the saliva to act on the teeth to remineralize. But it's that stickiness that's the problem. Now, if you eat mango, banana, apple, grapes, peaches, pears, all the, all the fruits, they're not sticky and they don't stick to your teeth. They don't stick in between your teeth. They wash away pretty quickly. So fruit doesn't really cause tooth decay. What causes tooth decay is sticky food, really. And... Uh, for me, I realized that my problem was, was dried fruit. It was actually dates. And I really believe that if I had never eaten dates, um, I would have, or, I, or if I'd only had them in the form of a smoothie where you're adding a lot more water to it, I probably wouldn't have had anywhere near the number of teeth issues that I did. I used to put dates in my mouth and just leave them and suck on them just put another one in and leave it in my mouth and suck it. And that just makes a really acidic environment. The, the bacteria bloom, you know, there's a layer of plaque developing. And uh, if you're not really on top of your teeth brushing, that can be really bad. So be very careful with dates, be very careful with dried fruit. Um, if you're gonna have, have dried fruit, you probably wanna floss regularly. You might wanna floss anyway. You probably wanna brush your teeth twice a day. Um, if you ever have sensitive spots in your mouth, you might want to consider brushing over them because that can actually be a sign of, of what, that kind of acid plaque. Just brush it away sometimes. If you brush at it and it remains sensitive and it doesn't go away, then there's a chance that there's further damage has been done. If you've got any sensitivity in your teeth, you should visit a dentist and, um, and, find, and see what's happened. Some people suggest that you can damage your teeth through exposure to unripe fruits. Now, I don't really understand this because I don't know who is eating enough unripe fruit for this to be a problem. Like who is eating super unripe fruits? It's, it's very difficult to eat unripe fruit, acidic fruits. It doesn't taste good. So who's doing that? So people say this and I'm like, it's not unripe. They'll say, well, I, I had a lot of oranges, unripe oranges. Where are you getting them? Are you growing these yourself? Because 
the fruit in the supermarket is never unripe oranges. It's very rarely is it very acidic oranges. So you can speak to a dentist, and I've spoke to my dentist over the years, and I was saying, can it be anything to do with acidic fruit damage that I was getting? Or fruit damage, and they would say no. No, you just don't, and they would say, you just don't take care of your teeth. You're not brushing your teeth well enough. And um, so it was just tooth decay. But for me, I think it was the dates, the dried fruit. So I cut all that out. And it seems like the problem really diminished when I, because I used to have very sensitive pain all, all the time, which wasn't nice. And then when I started flossing, that helped a lot. But then really when I started to cut out the dates completely, at that point, it made a huge difference. And I realized that was my mistake all along. And I really try and tell people, watch out for dates. Be very careful with them. Rinse after you eat them. Floss after you eat them, if you, if you must. But avoid them if you've got any sensitivities for your teeth. And uh, I, at least I don't think it's anything to do with acidic fruits or the mineral deficiency thing. I think it's much more likely to just be common tooth decay and uh, dried fruit being a particular problem with that. I don't know if any other fruit is a problem, really, because none of them are sticky enough, really. So, so that's the issue, I think, mainly with, with teeth. Certainly, I would say you probably could eat a very strict fruit diet and kind of get away with not brushing your teeth. But there are other problems with brushing your teeth that aren't related to tooth decay. There's gum disease and other things that go on. So it's probably pretty much essential to maintain a healthy mouth. You could like you see images if you go on some of the dental YouTube channels, you'll see sometimes people that haven't brushed their teeth in years. And they go into the dentist and they've got what they've got what you call calculus. Um, it's where the plaque and everything, like it's just formed this big, huge barrier of calculus, like this solid stuff. And often they clean out the calculus, and the teeth underneath are fine. <laughs> like these people have not been eating any, not been brushing the teeth for years, and they've been okay. So some people are in that position. Some people never have any teeth problems, you know. Um, and part of, that, part of that might be to do with the fact that the bacteria level is so low in their mouth that they never have any, they, they never have any issue. If we could get rid of the bacteria, tooth decay wouldn't happen. It is to do with the bacteria. It's not really a good thing. But yeah, if you were to eat a diet with no car carbohydrates, you, it, would all, it also wouldn't be able to happen. So, but a diet with no carbohydrates is not a particularly healthy diet for us. <clears throat> so, I've written more about that in the book. I've shared a bit more information. Um, you can check that out via the link below, and you can also get all of the rest of the Ro Ultimate Raw Weekend Bundle with that. But thank you for watching. Feel free to comment and like and share. And I'll see you in the next video.